Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. I want to thank you for joining me in this place and for uh, watching the show. Thank you for to those who are just checking out the show for the first time. I really hope you uh, enjoy what you see here. And for those who are returning viewers, thank you so much for sticking with me and for continuing to watch the show. For those who are Patreon subscribers, thank you especially to you. I have a really quick announcement to make for Patreon subscribers. We have another live streaming coming up this weekend. So Sunday, May 14th at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please look for a post on Patreon from me letting you know what the uh, listing is for the YouTube live uh, post for next week. I hope that you are able to join us. So that's Sunday, May 14th at 8 a.m. And if you're a Patreon subscriber, you know that the third show of every month is recorded live and I hope that you're able to join us this time. I would like to also uh, do a quick shout out to anybody who is a new Patreon of the show. We've had a couple of new people join over the last couple of weeks and I want to welcome you to this place. This is episode 69 and I have a little bit of a um, little bit more waxing poetic about my shoreline vest which I talked about quite a bit last week so I just have a quick few minutes to chat about that and I want to show a finished spin that I finished this week. What I really want to talk about is the sheep to shawl that I participated in this past weekend so uh, please stay tuned for that. Before we get on with the show and get on with that content I just wanted to really quickly mention that I received my fiber for our color studies that we are working on in the Ravelry group. We are doing a combination of a breed study along with a color study. I received my bats from Katrina. It was so lovely of her. And this is the BFL. We're looking at split complements this time round, and so there's purple, green, and yellow in on the BFL, and that was dyed on white. And we are studying Gotland, so we'll have some information coming up in the show about Gotland and about what we're doing with the Gotland. Do you want to show them the Gotland? And um, ugh, come on up here, big girl. Awesome. And what colors are these, Ma? What are these colors in here? What color do you see? Purple. Purple, yeah. What other color do you see? This time. What color is that? Purple. How about you take a guess? Mm. Green. Dang. Green. And do you know what that other color is? You can't really tell, but it looks like yellow. So this is the other color. This is the Gotland. And the Gotland was dyed on a gorgeous gray base. And so we're going to be looking at the colors based on how they are dyed on a dark gray and how they're dyed on white. Why do you put the dish on? Katrina tied that on to make it look really pretty. What do you think of that? It's pretty. It is pretty. Would you like that? Yeah. Would you like the ribbon? Okay. Yeah. You going to go tie it on now? Yes. Okay, good idea. You go do that. I can't tie it. Oh, why don't you, why don't you try and I'll help you after. So that is Color Studies. If you are wanting to know more and wanting to learn more, please head over to the Ravelry group. It is under Breed and Color Studies that run that is currently running. The dates are from March until October of 2017. And if you would like to look at the listing for the Gotland and the BFL, please head over to Katrina's uh, Etsy shop and you will find the listing in there. I can't. Oh, should we get them all tied up? Yes. All right. So I hope that you will stay tuned for more coming up in the show. So I only actually completed one thing this week and it wasn't even something that I was planning on completing. I haven't really been doing much spinning this, this past week and, and on the weekend. I worked all weekend and of course I had the sheep to shawl which was awesome. Um, and I was really, I've been really trying to clear off some projects, clear off my wheels, clear off my bobbins. I've also been teaching at Sweet Georgia and so that does cut into one night a week where I can't do my own spinning but it's really fun to chat with others and explain to them about their spinning. Oh, did it come off? So Owl's necklace fell off, so we have to fix Owl's necklace. 
So I chatted last week about some core spinning that I was doing and I actually did get it finished. This was a gradient that we were working on through uh, the Ravelry group or no, sorry, through Patreon back in November of 2016 when I was still doing Fiber Club for Patreon. Um, I no longer do Fiber Club, but this was one of the uh, gradients that I had put together. So it goes from sort of this um, really cool pinky, corally, rusty color all the way up to this um, cranberry red. I core spun this because I really wanted to see what it would look like core spun it, and then I uh, spiral applied it. I have finished this. I steamed it. I ended up with 220 yards of yarn, which I was really um, surprised about. And I actually um, spiral applied it with some 2.8 cotton that I had in my stash for weaving. Um, I, I don't love it applied with the white. I As soon as I started doing it, I was like, mm, and then the more I got on, the more I didn't like it. Um, I think it just becomes very... Um, the, the original fiber is quite muted and quite, um, it has a gentle rust, rustic kind of quality to it and, and it's really quite beautiful and when it's applied with the white it sort of gives it this polish that I don't think really suited the, the finished yarn. However, I think it'll be really, really pretty woven um, because I did end up having to do two bobbins because it all wouldn't fit on my jumbo bobbin. Um, the core spun yarn fit all on my, on one bobbin but the, um, when I was plying it, it, it wouldn't. So when you put a bit of added twist into this, and let me see if, I don't know if I'll be able to do it with one hand, but I'll try. And you cable ply it. It has a really, really cool look. And I don't know if you can see that, um, but it has a really neat look and it, it looks like, um, like bubbles kind of and so I it sort of got me thinking that maybe this would be really cool woven so that's actually what I'm going to do I'm going to weave with it and I'm going to see what ends up happening I don't know what I'm going to use for my warp yet but this will definitely be the weft um, or I might do this as the warp and do something else as the weft so I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do just yet but um, I'll keep you posted I am really happy with how this turned out in the sense that there was a lot of stuff in those nests of fiber that was included in the fiber club, there was alpaca, mohair, corydale, um, merino, sparkle. There was a lot of stuff in there. And I was really worried that all of that texture would get lost once I spiral applied it, but actually it turned out really, really well. So um, I, I was happy about that. And there are parts of the yarn where the white and the brown and the pink looks really cool together and I really like how it turned out. I think it's just the white on red that I'm not quite as keen on, but I do really like the colors and I will find a use for this because I do love the core spun and I'd like to try this again and ply it with a different color and see what happens because I have a whole bunch of weaving cotton now that I've been kind of collecting and I think that I will try it again with a different color and see what happens. I don't have any more of this fiber left, but I have some other stuff that would definitely work. So I'll keep you posted on what I end up doing with that. But that was what I finished this week. So it's nice to have something finished other than my shoreline, which I finished knitting, obviously. So I wanted to chat about the sheep to shawl. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to chat a little bit about my vest first and share with you a little bit about the shoreline. And then I will come back and I've got some photos to share with you about how, uh, so you can actually see the sheep to shawl and see what it actually ended up being like for those who have never seen a sheep to shawl before. Hi everyone. So I'm going to talk a little bit about shoreline while I'm standing here and I can stand next to my dress form and I can actually give you a bit of a um, rundown of what it looks like and how I've been styling it. I wore it this past Saturday and it was quite warm because of the alpaca content. It was um, really nice to have something to throw on that wasn't super... Um, I didn't need to style it or do a whole lot with it. I just put it on, it was easy to wear and I didn't have to think about it too much. So after last week's show, I seamed up the shoulder sleeves, and I'll take this off in just a minute, but I thought I'd show you how I've sort of been planning on wearing it. I seamed up the shoulder seams, and I went ahead and finished the collar, and I added my button bands, and this is sort of how I have been wearing it, so or how I planned to wear it. But because we're going into the spring, and it's been so warm here all of a sudden, very quickly, I skipped 
the shawl on Saturday, although I did bring it with me just in case, but it was very warm in the building that we were in, and I ended up just wearing it like this. And I had a blouse on as well. Um, I, I am planning on wearing it with just a plain gray t-shirt or a plain black t-shirt when I'm just out and about with the kids, mostly for ease of wear and for not having to really think about it. But this is what the shoreline ends, ended up looking like. What I'm really happy about is the asymmetry between the front and the back. I think this turned out really well and worked really well. It hangs really nicely when it's on. Um, unfortunately, when it's on my dress form, it's a little bit, um, it doesn't hang quite the way it does when it's on a real person. I didn't want to show it to you on me today because it's very difficult to speak to a garment when I'm actually wearing it. I chose some buttons from my stash. I, I usually put on buttons that are a bit too small for my buttonholes. And so this time I heeded a word of warning in my mind and thought, no, I'm going to go a little bit bigger than I normally do. And I'm really glad I did because I did button this up on Saturday for a little bit and it didn't come undone. I didn't have to fiddle with it or fidget with it. It was just nicely buttoned and hung really nicely. So because this vest is made with short rows, the front of it is slightly shorter and the back of it is about three inches longer. And I really like how it hangs at the back. I think it really turned out nicely. After I washed it, I was really worried about that line of, from lighter to dark. I did lose a little bit of color in the bath water, but it wasn't as much as I thought that it was. It would be, and so far it hasn't stained anything. So I think that just the rubbing of the yarn on my hands while I was working with it is what caused the bleeding more than anything. And my hands get warm when I'm knitting. This is an alpaca wool blend. I think it was just a lot of stuff happening in and around my hands while I was knitting. So that's the back of it. Um, it has a lovely drape. There are still guard hairs that I'm pulling out, but that's okay. And of course, this is the front. I'm really happy with how this turned out, as you can tell. And uh, if you have any questions about it or about the construction, please don't hesitate to ask me. It was Shoreline by uh, Carrie Bostick Hogue. So the sheep to shawl occurred at uh, the Surrey Museum here in uh, Surrey, British Columbia. There were two teams that participated this year, the Peace Arch Weavers and Spinners Guild, which are a short, short in form, we all call them the Paws Guild, like paws on a, on a cat or a dog, and our guild, which is the Langley Weavers and Spinners Guild, and we are the LWSG Guild. <coughs> um, so we arrived at 9.30 in the morning and we had our looms and our spinning wheel. Um, Kelsey was our weaver and uh, we were all on our wheels and our fr and Krista was our plier. Um, our plan this year was to hackle so when the uh, competition started at night at 10.30 we um, took the fleece and we threw it in the middle on the table between us and we started pulling out all of the locks and all the nice stuff that we really liked and we started hackling. As we hackled and got fiber um, prepped and ready in the nests that um, Hackles creates, because you can create quite a long strip of comb top on Hackles, which is really awesome. Once we had a couple of those, um, I went to my wheel and I was first spinner, so I started spinning right away and got tried to get my bobbin filled as quickly as possible. After I started spinning for probably about 10 minutes, um, our next spinner started. My friend Sandra sat down next to me and she started spinning. So by 10 after 11, we had two bobbins that were ready to be plied. So um, Krista, who is our plier, we took our bobbins off, gave her our bobbins and she started plying. And then me and Sandra continued to spin as our other part of our team continued to generate enough comb top for us to continue spinning. Um, you're only allowed to have six people on the floor at a time. So there were the, uh, initially there were three of us hackling and three picking through the fleece and getting the nicest locks. And then as I started spinning, then there were five and then Sandra started spinning. So then there were four people doing fiber prep. And then once Krista came over and started plying, then there were only three people doing fiber prep. So you can see how it kind of your your role changes as the morning goes on and as the day goes on. So we had until 12.30 before we bro broke for lunch. And so we started at 10.30. By quarter after 11, we had our first bobbin of plied to ply ready to go to the weaver to start winding bobbins. And she was able to start hem stitching and started to weave. 
So coming into the sheep to shawl, you already have your loom warped. So we had actually, um, our, one of our guild members, my friend Diana Twist, who many of you know because you follow her blog, 100milewear.com, she had spun our warp for us out of a local Romney. I think it was a Romney Merino cross, whatever. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. And then me and Kelsey had dyed it. We using a hand painting technique with acid dyes. And we used navy and a little bit of black to get these sort of splashes of color. And you're going to see that in the, in the photos as they roll through. So um, her, so we had warped the loom the, the previous Sunday. So we s did all of this competition on Saturday. And we had warped the loom the week before. And... Once Kelsey started weaving at about 20 after 11, she sort of didn't stop weaving from then on. So she hem stitched and got the first 25 inches of weaving done by 12:30 when we started when we broke for lunch. From about quarter to 11 onwards, I was pretty much spinning. So I think I stopped spinning. Me and Sandra stopped spinning at about 2 to 10. And um, Krista continued to ply the last little bit that we needed. But once Kelsey said that she had enough yarn on her bo on her weaving bobbins to be able to finish up, Krista actually stopped we uh, applying as well. So we had bobbins that had singles left on them still, and we had bobbins that still had plied yarn, and we just stopped because at that point you're get you're tired. You've been sitting there spinning for however many hours and you're sort of getting ready to go on to the next part of the competition. So we broke for lunch for half an hour. We came back at one o'clock and me, we all started in on fiber prep again, except for Kelsey who continued to weave. So as we were doing the fiber prep, we were sort of starting to talk about, okay, what are we going to do when Kelsey says that she has no more yarn that she needs? And we started to talk about what our plan would be. We knew what our plan was because we had talked about it ahead of time in, in our meetings previously but as we um, were actually in the moment and in the process we we continued to talk about it to make sure that everybody knew exactly what their role was one of the things that worked really well for us is even though you're only allowed six people on the floor at a time we had two alternates so there were a few times where like I had to get up and use the washroom um, a couple other people wanted to get up and get off the floor as well fill up coffee cups that kind of stuff um, you can call one of the alternates and say, hey, can you spin for a minute or can you do this for a minute while I just step off the floor? And that worked really nicely because in previous years we haven't had alternates. And um, this year was my first time and Kelsey's first time participating. But I know the rest of the team said it made a huge difference for them to be able to get up, walk away and come back. We, they provided food and refreshments for us, but we did take our lunches and I was really glad to do that because I was eating my own food and when you're in a busy situation and you're moving a lot and stuff, you tend to forget to eat, but you also don't want to eat stuff that might upset your stomach. So it was nice to be able to have my own stuff and eat what I would normally eat at home. The other thing was once Kelsey said that we could stop spinning and that she had enough yarn, she started to move towards getting the hem stitching done on the top of the shawl so that we could get ready to start cutting it off. So once it was getting ready to cut off, everybody was sort of around taking photos, really um, wanting to see what we had created, but also recognizing that we still had quite a bit of work to do. So while she was getting that done, there were a few of our team members that were clearing off the table where we had done our hackling, putting everything off to the side, cleaning up, sweeping a little bit, getting any sawdust, anything that comes off the fleece, it's a little bit dirty, off the table, cleaned off, we recovered it, um, and put the, the finished shawl down on the table so that Kelsey could start inspecting it, fix any mistakes that she found. She couldn't find any, and the judge couldn't either, which was pretty amazing. 72 inches of weaving, and I think our finished shawl ended up being more like 79 inches long. Not one mistake, so well done to Kelsey. And um, the rest of us were, um, you know, finishing the fringe, getting it knotted off, getting it trimmed, um, and Kelsey went down... <laughs> the entire length of the shawl trimming off um, any ends of yarn so that you know where her joins were one of the things that we had experienced in previous years not because I had participated but because our team sort of had done a um, brainstorming thing of things that we wanted to change in the future before we had um, started practicing for the sheep to shawl was not having um, a lot of joins down the down the weaving so trying to minimize having weaving bobbins that weren't 
completely full um, because it interrupts the weaver and then she, you know he or she is constantly having to change bobbins and having to load their shuttle and so that really made a big difference because down the length of the shawl Kelsey had places that she needed to trim off and make sure that it, the joints were well done but not you know one after the other and that really I think added to the the quality of the finished shawl. So once we finished and we, we felt as a team that we were done and we were ready to submit, we folded the shawl up and we pre and Kelsey presented it to the judge and said that we were officially finished. We had a little powwow, yahoo, well done everybody kind of moment and then we went off to get some refreshments and um, have a sit down, use the washroom, anything that we kind of had to do to get off the floor and get a break. And then we started cleaning up our own things because you have to think like, we all had our hackles with us, our combs, our wheels, extra bobbins, scissors. We all had tons of stuff with us. So we started to clean up and get ready because they actually take a full hour to judge. So we submitted our shawl at about quarter to three. The other team submitted at about five to three. We had until 3 p.m. to submit our shawl. And um, from 3 p.m. onwards, the judge is locked away in a room with a couple of other people and they go over the shawls meticulously. They get out their measuring tapes and their magnifying glasses and it's very intense. And uh, then they came back down and she had a little short reflection on things that she had to say about both teams. So we lost two points in spinning consistency, which is actually the best that we've our guild has done. Our plier and the Kelsey, our weaver, both said that they were really amazed at how consistent our yarn was, that that was something that they both had really felt was very, um, compared to other years, we had done really well. Uh, we also lost points on originality of, of design. So we did M and Ws, and we focused on the mountains and, and waterways that are surround us here in the lower, lower Fraser Valley. We all love the mountains that surround us and where, of course, there's water everywhere and waterways and bridges and whatnot. So uh, we had a couple of really beautiful photos. The people that did our, our we had part of our team was, was uh, designing a board and they um, were our stewards and they stood and, um, you know, talked to the public for us and, you know, kept them from sort of interrupting us, right? Um, although we were able to talk quite a bit, which was really great and the public was really engaged. A couple of my friends came by and said hello, which was awesome. And a couple of my student, current students who are also friends of mine came by, which was wonderful. And uh, they did an awesome job just answering questions and, and doing all that. They also had a sheep shearing out front. So there were a bunch of sheep outside and they had to shear. And my friend Anne was involved in organizing all of that. So um, Mike brought the kids and they got to see all of that and sort of enjoy, see the other side of what I do, not just the, the craft here at home and the wheels and the loom and stuff. And the kids were quite taken with the sheep and oh mommy they cut the sheep off and I was you know, trying to explain to them like no they're just taking the wool off and it make, it helps with the sheep for the summer he's not so hot and oh why would they do that and I was showing them like you know some of my sweaters and my yarns and explaining to them like you know that's where that comes from and Nora thought that was really cool which was neat. So it was overall a fantastic um, experience. We have an invitation our guild to another sheep to shawl that's happening in the fall up in the Okanagan. I'm not sure if we're going to accept the invitation or not yet. It's a little bit different than what we've done in the past um, in terms of the rules of the competition, but we're talking about it and we'll see. So um, if you have any questions about sheep to shawl or any uh, questions about sort of how ours is done or any of the rules, um, we don't have to have a hand spun warp, although you do lose points in our competition if you don't. Um, you don't have to hand dye it, but you do get points if you do. And um, yeah, if you've participated in a sheep to shawl, please come over to the Ravelry group and share your experiences and things that you've learned along the way. I'd love to hear. I wanted to mention that um, I didn't do the uh, monthly draw this month, this week for this show. Normally I would do it um, in today's show. The reason is because I actually ordered something new for the rest of the year to give out as the monthly draw and I'm really excited about it. I did receive it and the envelope was empty. Wah wah. <laughs> so I'm waiting for it to be reshipped. They've already shipped it. It's in the mail. They were fantastic about it. The, the customer service was excellent. Um, I think they felt really badly about it. And so they've already shipped it. I'm just waiting for it to arrive. And next week during the live stream, I will do the draw then and whomever wins, congratulations. So until next week, have a wonderful week and a happy spinning adventures this weekend. Bye guys.